Hey y'all, welcome to my channel or welcome back. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining us. If you are returning, you already know it. You are fabulous. All right, so today's DIYs are going to be high-end Dollar Tree Farmhouse Christmas. So excited about these. They turn out fabulous. All right, DIY number one. So for this DIY, what I did was I took these, um, they're like wedding arrows, I guess you would use like at a wedding reception or something from the Dollar Tree. Also this merry and bright uh, wooden thing that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now I just took those arrows and took off everything that was on the back, like the hangers and all that. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help my channel. Share this video if you're not subscribed. I would love for you to do so. And also hit that notification bell so that you'll know each time I upload a new video. Now, before we go any further, I want to tell you all about this hot glue gun. So, I'm always really leery of... Um, reviewing stuff on my channel because I don't ever want to review something. I don't want to ever give anybody a bad review, but I also do not want to review something and it not be what you guys are expecting if you do purchase it. So whatever I show you, just know it's something that I'm, I'm going to stand behind. This hot glue gun is fantastic. It works great. It gets really, really hot. It actually has two settings though. You can use it on high or low. Um, it's got a decent sized nozzle. Now this is going to be for your more, your bigger projects, you know. Um, I like my little one with the little tiny, uh, nozzle on it for my smaller stuff. But now this one right here works great. Now, I'm going to use this throughout this entire video with every DIY that we use. Um, you can actually uncord it. You can pull the cord out of the back and go, you know, be able to be mobile with this works great. It is made by Monvict and I will actually have a link in the description box for it. Now, I started out by just adding these craft sticks to the back of this. Um, we're making a, a fence is what we're doing, a picket fence. So, I didn't have any of my big craft sticks, so I just took a bunch of the smaller ones and just added them all over the back of this to hold this together really good. Now, I'm going to be painting it with my homemade white chalk paint. I just go over it about three times, I think it took, to cover it up. And I did use my heat tool in between coats. I'll leave a link in the description box for it. It is fantastic. Now, I just got it on Amazon, and it, it works great. And it's only like $10 or $12. So, as I said, I just painted the entire thing white. Now, I'm going to take these edging pieces. And the reason I call them edgings is because that's what they were called at the hardware store. There was a box full of these, $0.99 cents a piece, and it just said edgers. <laughs> so, if there's an actual name for these, some Somebody let me know in the comments. I have no idea. I ju it's just a piece of edging. So what I did was just lay it across my fence, marked it off, and then I'm going to take my uh, miter box and I'm going to cut this. Now I left this in real time because I wanted y'all to see just how easy it is to cut this piece of wood. Now I realize this is not a huge piece of wood or anything, but we're talking about crafting, okay? Not, not building something. So it just cuts so smooth, and it's such a, it's a straight line. You know it's going to be a straight line every time because it's got the little notches and the orange thing, and it just works perfect. So, I'll have a link in the description box for it also, and it is on Amazon, and they actually have a bigger one on Amazon for about the same price. So, I think I'm, I'm thinking about purchasing it, actually. All right, now, I took those pieces after I had painted them white. I add some um, wood glue that I smear in. I always smear in my wood glue. I don't know why, but I just do, okay? <laughs> it's not necessary probably, but I, I feel like it works better. I did that, added some hot glue, and then just placed it down right on my fence, or our so-called fence, what we're making. Now, I lost some footage somehow of me dry brushing this fence, but I am going to go back and show y'all exactly what I did. I took some mineral by Waverly paint, um, and just dry brushed right over the top of this. Very light handed because I just wanted to age it a little bit. I didn't want it to be just too much, but I did want to age it some. And I also took some sandpaper and went around the edges of these, of this entire piece. Now I'm taking my Arteza paints that are fabulous. Okay. Like I don't, let's just, let me talk about something for a second. I personally do not like acrylic paint. I just don't. I don't like the coverage that it gives you. I, I, I just, I feel like it's just, I don't know. I just don't like it personally. But Arteza sent me a bunch of different paints and stuff and whatever to try out. 
And I am just in shock. I mean, I'm a, I'm definitely an Arteza fan now because this paint is so good. Number one, you get such a great um, selection of colors. But not only that, the coverage is, I mean, it's almost like chalk paint. One coat and you are done. This stuff works fantastic. Also, the pigment of these colors is just gorgeous. I mean, look at that red. It is so pretty. It is so vibrant. I'm going to use the red, um, I believe it's called Scarlet Red, and I'll leave a link in the description box for each of these paints that I'm using because I'm telling y'all, you really need to check out the Arteza. They are just fantastic paints. I'm, I'm a true believer in Arteza now. <laughs> All right, so I just painted the Mary in red. I'm going to take my um, green. It is called Chromium Oxide Green, and I'm painting the word bright, and then in the middle where the and sign is, I'm going to take a pearl copper gold and paint that, and y'all look at just how shiny this is. Now, this is acrylic paint, remember. Look at that. Gorgeous. All right, once I've got it painted and it dries, I'm going to take my Antique Wax by Waverly, and I'm just going to dry brush right over the top of this. Now, I started out with a light hand because I didn't know if I was going to like it or not, and I wanted to make sure that it was, you know, if I didn't like it, I was able to paint back over it. I didn't want to get it just too much on there, but I realized as I was painting that I did like the way it was looking, so I did go back in with a heavier hand on it. But a lot of times I try to go light in the beginning just to, you know, just to make sure you like it. All right, once that was dry, I'm actually going to take my Marion Bright sign, flip it over. I have got some twine, and I get my twine at Walmart. I think it's a better, better, um, uh, it's more, you get more for the price, you know, as far as like it versus Dollar Tree. I feel like Walmart is the best, best buy there. Now, I just added it to the outside edge of the Y and the M. That way it would hang straight. I'm going to hang it right over the top of my fence. Add a little bead of hot glue to the back just to hold it in place. Now we've got that on our sign. All right. Once I had that done, I'm actually going to take some of the gold berry garland and just weave it in and out of this fence. I wanted it to look like... um you know, like a vine growing across the top of it. I just thought it would be cute, and actually, I think it turns out great. So, I just twisted it around there, weaved it in and out, you know, just kind of placed it all wonky. I wanted it to look that way. Now, once I got it where I wanted it, I actually just flipped it over, snipped it off, and I'm going to place a bead of hot glue there just to hold it in place, and I also put some hot glue on the other side to hold the, the first piece that I started out with in place. Now, I'm taking these pieces of flooring that my best friend gave me when they redid their kitchen. Thank you, Brie. <laughs> and I'm taking some sandpaper and just going right over the top of it, kind of try to get some of that shininess off. Now, it didn't, I didn't get a whole lot, but I did try to get some of it off. Added some wood glue. Of course, I smeared in because I like to smear my wood glue. Added some hot glue, and I add a crap ton of hot glue to this. I really want this to stick together, so I, I definitely added a lot of hot glue. What we're doing is making a stand for our fence. I wanted this fence to stand up on its own. I didn't want it to have to be hung on the wall or something, so I did want to put something on it that was going to help it stand up, and it's it's kind of tall, so I needed something that was heavy enough that it wasn't going to, you know, be top heavy, so that's why I chose to do the flooring, and it works out perfect. Now, I just added some wood glue and some hot glue to the bottom of that, popped it right on the back of my fence, and voila, how cute is this? Oh. Alright, so for this second DIY, we're going to be using these candles that I got from the Dollar Tree. Also, one of the ornaments from the Dollar Tree. And I just took that ornament and actually took the little embellishments that was on it off and saved that. We're going to be using that later in this DIY. Now, very carefully, <clears throat> I used a box cutter to um, 
cut out the letters from this ornament. I wanted to separate this and have individual letters from this. Now, it did really well. It took a little bit because I went really slow trying not to cut myself, obviously. But the only thing I did was kind of messed up the O a little bit. But we're going to fix that in just a minute and everything will be fine. So, it does. you can cut them apart. It, it does work. Now, I took the uh, candles, lined them up. Then I'm going to take my letters and I'm just hot gluing those right to the candle. And I kept it lined up. That way I could make sure that my letters were all even. They were all um, at the same height across the candles. Now, I felt like this just needed something. So I took some eucalyptus that I had and just placed it all along the bottom in, on the front. And then I actually flipped the candles over and put it on the back of the candles also. These are, these are so cute. These really turn out cute. Now, I took some of the berries from a berry pick um, from the Dollar Tree, and I just kind of snipped those off and used pieces of it. Like, I didn't, I wanted, like, smaller pieces of it, so I just snipped it with scissors. And I just hot glued those in between where those two pieces of eucalyptus met. That way, it kind of looked like holly berries. That's what I wanted it to look like, holly, I, you know, holly bush, whatever. Anyways, and it does. It, it really looks cute. So, that's how we embellish the bottom. Now, I'm going to take some of this buffalo check ribbon that I also get from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description box for it. And I took that piece that we took off first, the little embellishment that we had, and I took it and just made a shoestring bow right, right, right across the middle of it. Took my ends, dovetailed them, just snipped it off, dovetailed them. And then I'm going to take it and see where the O is kind of messed up in that side. We're just going to place that right, right directly on there. You'll never see that the O is messed up and it turns out cute. Look at these. They are darling. <laughs> All right, so before we get into DIY number three, my daughter actually wants to share something with y'all. Hey y'all, it's Gracie, and these are the On For You LED smart lights that On For You sent my mom, and they are really neat. They come with this remote, which is awesome, and it changes the color. Ooh, pretty. It's party lights. So they go all different colors. Oops. Whoa. Whoa, I didn't know it did that. It's got a lot of different styles, I guess you could say. And if you don't have a remote, you can plug your phone up to them. And that works really well. And they're just really neat. Thank you. Y'all, these lights are so cool, and they're so easy to put up. Like, she put them up herself, actually, in her room. They turn out fantastic. They look so stinking cute, and they're such a great, like, this could be a great Christmas gift for a teenager or something. Oh, my gosh. They look so good. You did a fantastic job, sis. Y'all, she did this all by herself. That is how simple it is to put these lights up. Look at how bright they are, oh my gosh. One box went all the way around her bedroom. Actually doubled up on one wall, it actually doubled. How stinking cool is that? Do you love them? I love them. They are so neat. So I will leave a link in the description box for um, that particular company, the On For You. They would be a perfect Christmas gift for a teenager, I'm telling you. I know my, my kids love them. All right, this third DIY, we're taking one of these wreath forms and the garland from the Dollar Tree. Also, uh, another piece of that edging and a canvas that I got from a yard sale for like a dollar. 
Now, I just took a flathead screwdriver and pulled out all of the staples that were on the back because I, we, we're just using the frame of this canvas. Now, I took my piece of edging, measured it off right where I wanted to cut it. Once again, I'm just going to use my miter box. I cut it to fit. Now, once I got it the way I wanted it, I'm just going to hot glue it straight down. Now, I should have probably done wood glue with this, but it's all right. No big deal. If I want to change it out or something, I can. So, no big deal. All right. Now, once I got that glued on, I'm actually going to take my white chalk paint. My home, it's homemade chalk paint. And I'm just going to dry brush right over the top of this canvas. And when I say dry brush, this was a very heavy handed dry brush because I wanted it to be, I wanted it to look like it had been white at one time and, you know, obviously was distressed. So some plot spots on it, I, I completely covered and then some of it, I just kind of left dry brushed, but it turns out perfect. I absolutely love this DIY. Now, once I got it dry, you know, painted the way I wanted it, and as you can see, it's kind of, it's kind of two-toned. Um, I also took some sandpaper and went around the edges of it to distress it even more. Now, I took this, I had a little trouble with this wreath form trying to get it cut. I just could not get this sucker to cut for nothing. I mean, I was trying like heck to get it to go and it just, it took forever. Then I decided I'd just kind of move my cutters back and forth and that worked perfect. So anyways, just a little tip. If you're cutting one of these wreath forms, if you'll just take your cutters and go back and forth, back and forth with them, it'll pop right in half. I mean, it, it works great. Now, I took my um, garland and my wreath form, and I'm just going to take that garland, and because the garland is wired, I'm able to just twist it around the inside uh, part of that wreath form, and then that makes it stay, just to keep it in position. Then I'm going to take the entire piece of garland, fold it together, and just begin to wrap this all the way around this wreath form. So I'm just wrapping all the way around, kind of scrunching it as I go, and fluffing as I go. These things are, they work, they work great, but you do have to, you know, fluff them and kind of bring them back to life. I guess the way they're packaged, you know, they kind of get flat. But anyways, once I got it around my um, wreath form the way I wanted it, got it fluffed out, I'm going to take the, the rest of that um, beaded garland that we, or berry garland that we used in the first DIY, and I'm just going to wrap it right around my wreath form. I'm actually securing it to the wreath form itself. That that garland is also wired, so you're able to do the exact same thing as you did with the garland. Just, you know, connect it that way. Now, I also had some of the red berry garland, so I just wrapped it around exactly the same way as I did the first one. Just went a little opposite direction, you know, kind of spacing it out a little bit. This turns out so cute. I cannot wait for y'all to see this. Now, once I was done, I just felt like it was missing something. So, I took this pick that I got from Walmart. Look at this. This is one pick of eucalyptus for $2. And I want y'all to see just how much came off of this pick. Y'all, for 2 bucks, you can't beat that. Look at how much that is. That's a lot of greenery right there off of one pick. So anyways, I took my pieces of eucalyptus and I just tucked them up under that garland that we had put on there, the, the berry garland. Literally just tucked it up under there. So no hot glue had to be used, nothing like that. If I want to take this apart and reuse parts of it, I can do that. I mean, endless possibilities with this. No, no hot glue at all. I, like I said, I'm just tucking it right up underneath there. Taking a piece, sliding it underneath there, making sure that the leaves are kind of spread out apart from it and it stays in place. None of this fell out when I was doing my pictures of it or, and I moved it around quite a bit doing the pictures. So this stayed in place just right. Now, once I got that on there the way that I wanted it, I took this um, infinity scarf that I got from the Dollar Tree, my rotary cutter, and just slice that dude right in half. Now, I folded it over, kind of doubled it up and folded it over, smoothed it out, decided how long I wanted it to be, and I'm actually just going to take my cutter once again and just cut it right off. Now, I took that piece, folded it around my, my wreath, as you see there, then folded it over the top of the um, frame. Now, I'm going to flip my frame over, and then I just hot glued it right to that frame, right across the top and right down the, the center there. 
I'm just hot gluing it right in place. I want this to stay in place. So I'm actually going to hot glue the, the scarf to itself also. That way nothing moves around. This dude stays exactly in the middle of this frame. I want it to stay just right. So I just hot glued all of that part. Now, I decided I wanted to um, put the little white paint on it just to, you know, make, give it that snowy look. And it, it really turns out really, really cute. Y'all check this out. I love it. It's so simple, but I love it. So for this fourth DIY and our final DIY for the day, I've got some of these like beads and rocks from the Dollar Tree. I've also got some of the um, garland ties from the Dollar General, a dowel rod from Walmart, and a bag that also came from the Dollar General, like a little novelty bag. Now I took those garland ties and just kind of made a little loop, hot glued that to the top of this dowel rod, and I'm just going to go all the way down it, just wrapping it right around the, the dowel rod itself. Once I get that piece on, I'm actually going to take a second piece, add a little more hot glue, and do the same thing. And I make that little loop in there so that you don't burn yourself with the hot glue. Now, once I got that completely covered, I'm actually laying it out, and I am going to cut out the kind of skeleton, I guess you'd say, or like the bones of a Christmas tree. And that's where we're going with this. So this is just going to be a small little Christmas tree, kind of a filler, you know, for, for like a tablescape or, or something like that. Maybe put it on your mantle or I don't know, but it turns out really cute. It's very simple, but really cute. All right. Now, I just twisted those around that. Got my bones together. My, 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 bone, my skeleton of my tree is now made. I added one to the top and kind of pointed it up. Now, when I went to put the other ones on, I realized that I'm losing a lot of the tie when I twist it around there. So what I ended up doing was just straightening that one back out, taking a little hot glue and adding that dude right to, I mean, just gluing it right to there. I end up gluing it, the rest of this um, tree, I glue that same way. I just added a little hot glue, placed it on there. And there you have it. Now, once I got that ready to go, I take um, that bag. I added my beads and my, my rocks to the bottom of it so that it would stay, you know, it would stand up on its own. And then I added some bags, some grocery bags to it to fluff it out some. And I'm just going to stand my tree straight up in this bag. That's the way I want it to stand. It's a lot easier to put the rest of the garland ties on, like our limbs, I guess you'd say, with it standing up. It's a lot easier to do with it standing up. So that's what I did. Now, as you can see there, I separated my little garland ties out. I had cut them prior to this, and I separated them out into small, medium, and large started at the top with my small and just went all the way down small medium large and i just crisscrossed them placed them where it looked like it needed one just you know what a christmas tree looks like so obviously like you're just gonna go back and forth with it just play with it until you get it the way you want add more of the ties you can do less of the ties if you want a skinnier tree just very very simple diy y'all this is so easy this did not take me maybe 10 minutes to make total. This is so simple. I didn't decorate this tree. Now, I did add a little white paint just to, um, you know, make it look snowy, the flocked look, but that's all I did. Look how cute. It's just a cute little tree.
All right, y'all. That's it for today. I hope that y'all have enjoyed these DIYs. I know that I definitely had a great time doing these. I'm so ready for Christmas. I cannot wait to start decorating and just doing, and I just love it. All right. Y'all don't forget to check out Arteza Paints, and also check out that Monvict for the hot glue gun. Now, I have got a Facebook and an Instagram, so definitely check those two out. I'll leave links for those in the description box. That is a great way to connect with me. Um, definitely see lots of decor and also know ahead of time when videos are coming out. Don't forget to like this video. If you did, for sure, share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would love for you to do so. And also hit that notification bell so that you'll know each time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and y'all have a blessed day.